Hi everyone. My name is Amir Suhail. Today I am going to demonstrate uh, the ultra fast laser micro machining equipment which we use for our micro fabrication applications. So uh, before going to uh, operate the equipment, let me uh, explain a bit uh, about the about the process as well as uh, the equipment. So let's let's go to this part. So uh, this is a general purpose uh, ultra fast laser micro machining workstation. So the first letter is general purpose. So it can be used for many applications, but uh, it cannot be used for all, all the applications. So so uh, so uh, micro machining is is the process of making small things in micrometers 10 raised to minus 6 meters by material removal so we will be essentially uh, removing materials to make uh, structures in the micrometer scale so uh, so uh, for our micro machining we are using an ultra fast laser as the tool so uh, our uh, uh, tool for machining is an ultra fast laser so ultra fast or ultra short time scale that is the time scale in in uh, in femtoseconds to picoseconds so uh, the tool tool size for us that is the laser beam waist diameter that is uh, ranging from 5 to 10 micrometer so we can make structures as small as 5 to 10 micrometer so the minimum spot size with the laser that is also 5 micrometer so uh, let us see uh, how we will be uh, doing uh, the micro machining with pulse lasers so uh, imagine that this is an area which you will be machining so these are multiple number of laser pulses pulses you are supplying in the in this particular area so there are some parameters which we need to control so they are the energy of a single pulse so how much energy is there for a single pulse that is one parameter we should control another parameter is the duration of that pulse so how, for how long this pulse is is uh, being imparted in the sample so that is the second parameter the third parameter is the time between two subsequent pulses so after this pulse has been imparted the scan head will move uh, from this point to this point so how like uh, how with with how much time it will move from here to here that is the time between two subsequent pulses that is a parameter to control and the third fourth and fifth par parameters are, are uh, the lateral pulse spacing and the hash width that is uh, denoted here the distance in this x axis and y axis so so this is the schematic of of machining so these parameters can cannot be uh, like measured when we will be uh, using the equipment so uh, so uh, like uh, there are some uh, like uh, uh, measurable values which are dependent on these parameters those are the pulse repetition rate of of the laser source so that is like uh, how many pulses are are coming out of the laser per second and the another parameter is the average power that is uh, the energy per unit time so how much energy is coming out of the laser Per second the third parameter is the scan speed that is the speed at which the scanner is moving in the in the working area to to machine the sample so that is the third parameter so we can connect these two measure these three measurable values with these parameters by using these three equations so the time between subsequent pulses is the inverse of repetition rate the pulse energy can be calculated by uh, dividing average power with the repetition rate and the lateral pulse spacing can be calculated by dividing the scan speed with the repetition rate so these uh, these are the parameters which we will be using while machining we need to optimize these parameters we need to choose the set of parameters for, for uh, the respective samples we will be using so now let's move on to the parts of the system there are three parts for the laser so laser system the first part is a femtosecond fiber laser the second part is a second harmonic generator the third part is a galvanometer scanner connected with an f theta lens so uh, let, let us explain uh, let us see this first part that is a femtosecond fiber laser so uh, so in this femtosecond fiber laser the first part is is a fiber oscillator so in this fiber oscillator 
light pulses of 1 nanojoule energy at, at a wavelength of 1030 nanometer is, is being produced at, uh, at, a re at a repetition rate of 25 megahertz. So, so essentially, 1 nanojoule energy light pulses are, are being produced in this oscillator at, at a rate of 25 million pulses per second. So, uh, so this energy is very small. So uh, our, micro our micro machining application, this energy is insufficient. So this one nanojoule of energy is not sufficient for, uh, for re removing material from, from all our samples. So we need to use amplifiers to increase the energy of the light pulse. So we will be using uh, multiple number of amplifiers and also we won't be needing the 25 megahertz uh, repetition rate for our uh, micro machining applications. We will be needing from 200 kilohertz to 1 megahertz. So for reducing the repetition rate from 25 megahertz to uh, this desirable, desirable uh, repetition rate, we will be using a pulse picker. So essentially it will reduce the pulse repetition rate and, and so that we can use uh, the laser source for micro machining. So after that we will use a main amplifier. There, there is a preamp here, preamplifier here. Then we will use a main amplifier. After that we will be achieving a pulse energy of 10 uh, microjoule. So the initial pulse energy was 1 nanojoule. So we have amplified that to reach a value of 10 microjoule. So at the output we will be having 10 microjoule which in which the amplification throughout the system that will be 10,000 times. Now let us see the second part of the system that is a second harmonic generator. So this, this actually is used uh, to double the frequency of, of the femtosecond fiber laser output. So here the wavelength was 1030 nanometer. So, so by using the second harmonic generator we can, we can convert this wavelength to 515 nanometer. So this process is actually a highly inefficient process where we will be combining two photons with, with, uh, with 1.2 electron volt energy and we will be achieving a photon, a single photon with double the val value of energy. So this process is a non-linear process and it is highly inefficient. So because of that, we, are we will be achieving only 30 percentage of efficiency. So you can see that in the SHG input, when we will be applying 10 microjoule of pulse energy, we will be getting only 3 microjoule of energy at the outlet of this second harmonic generator. So uh, there is a question, why we are using this second harmonic generator? So there are three advantages. The first advantage is that that when we will be machining some high band gap materials such as glass with some for example 10 electron volt of, uh, of uh, band gap. So uh, when we will be using uh, photons with uh, double the value of energy, the we, we can get uh, a lower order non-linear absorption. So the, uh, order of non-linear absorption will be reduced by by half so uh, that is the first advantage so it, it is it will be easier to machine materials such as glass or some other dielectric materials so the second advantage is that we will be getting a smaller uh, beam waste diameter of 5 micrometer that is what what we will be getting and we will be getting a higher peak intensity so these three advantages are compared uh, with the direct output of this femtosecond fiber laser. So for getting these advantages, we are using the second harmonic generator. The third part is a galvanometer scanner which is connected uh, to an F theta lens. So this galvanometer scanner is used for beam scanning in the XY plane while we will be machining. So the focal length of this F theta lens is 130.2 mm. And uh, the working area with this galvanometer scanner of theta lens setup we will be getting is 40 by 40 mm. So this is the maximum area of the sample which we can machine. So another uh, part is, is the beam waste diameter that is uh, possible with this galvanometer scanner and this focal length is 5 to 10 micrometer as told uh, above. So uh, uh, most importantly the scan speed with this galvanometer scanner can be varied from 1 meter per second to 1 uh, one mm per second to 1 meter per second. So this uh, this uh, maximum speed of this galvanometer scanner is, is so high. So our productivity, our process capability will be very, very uh, good for machining. 
so there are some uh, other accessories also we will be using while machining so uh, first is the is a power meter so we will measure the average power for calculating the pulse energy we will uh, measure the average power with this power meter and and we will be using a spectrum analyzer for for viewing the oscillator spectra viewing the spectra of this oscillator and this oscillator is generating this small pulses ultra short pulses by a technique called mode locking so we need to have a so, uh, spectrum analyzer for verifying the mode uh, mode locking of the oscillator so another part is is an oscilloscope we need to view for viewing the pulse strain so we will be using the oscilloscope by that we can uh, we can view the repetition rate how much is the repetition rate the fourth part is a z stage which we will be using along with the galvanometer scanner of theta lens setup for adjusting the focus of the sample in the in the z z axis so now let's see the parts of the system this is the laser this is uh, uh, like there is oscillator inside the laser and there are amplifiers and and which the outlet of the laser will be will be through this side and uh, this is the controller this is the controller which will be uh, giving signals to for functioning of the laser and and uh, this is this is an oscilloscope we have connected to the oscillator of the laser so so with this oscilloscope in this computer we can see the pulse uh, like the oscillator spectra in this computer and also to see the pulse strain pulse strain we have connected uh, an oscilloscope with the with the controller so we can see the pulse uh, repetition rate with this oscilloscope and and now moving forward to to here this is the second harmonic generator where we will be doubling the frequency of the output of this particular laser so with this uh, second harmonic generator we will be getting 515 nanometer beam pulse laser source with maximum energy of 3 microjoule so let's go into the front side right. and and see the parts so the beam beam from the second harmonic generator will come uh, through this mirrors mirror 1 2 3 4 5 and into the galvanometer scanner so uh, so there is like we have connected the power meter here for measuring the power and this is a z stage which is used to move the sample in the and to keep the sample and to move the sample in the z axis so uh, on the bottom of this galvanometer scanner we have connected an f theta lens to get a larger area of, of uh, working area of 40 by 40 mm so essentially inside this galvanometer scanner there are two mirrors which will uh, which will uh, bend the beam to move uh, the uh, the beam in the x x and y axis so that's all and uh, here there is a tablet interface we will be using this tablet interface for for communicating with the controller with the laser so uh, currently the laser is active and we can change the pulse duration by using by changing the compressor position and also we can change the average power also by using this tablet interface also we can adjust the pulse repetition rate so we currently optim we have currently optimized the system to from a value of 200 kilohertz to 1 megahertz so we can set the repetition rate values also so uh, this is a software this is this uh, uh, there is a computer here so with this computer we have installed a software so to control this galvanometer scanner motors we are using a software which is installed to this pc so uh, this software from is from this company called scanlab so we will be we will be uh, running our uh, like we will be importing or uh, drawing the geometries inside this software and we can use this camera to see the machining in real time so now uh, let us see the procedure for for starting the system and to to uh, load a load a geometry and to do the machining let's see that so first of all we have to turn on uh, the a preamplifier the pre amplifier then we we have to turn on the final amplifier and and then uh, the galvanometer scanner so first first let's go and check uh, the preamplifier one so we have to rotate this particular key to turn on the uh, preamp uh, preamplifier so after turning on the key we have to go to the tablet interface 
the tablet interface here and we have to uh, start the laser here now we have already started the laser and and it's active so we can set the parameters such as pulse duration the average power and the repetition rate with these three controls so after setting all these parameters we have to keep uh, our sample you in the in the stage uh, at a particular at the required location and then we have to open this particular software so after keeping the sample in the in the z stage we have to go to this software and and uh, we have to uh, for we can draw we can either draw the uh, geometry or we can import the geometry so for importing we can use file and then we can import and we can select the file like i have already selected a particular uh, file and then uh, uh, we can uh, select the scale and we can uh, uh, check the aspect ratio of the frame also of the geometry also then we can center the geometry into the working area into into this particular center and then we can click okay now the geometry we have drawn in some other uh, 2d cad software will be imported here into this particular interface so we generally use uh, used to import uh, dxf files so it will take a little bit time yeah. this software is actually not an open source software so we generally used to draw the geometries by uh, by some other software so now the geometry has been imported so uh, this is a micro channel which we are going to uh, fabricate we are going to machine on a stainless steel sample so after importing the geometry we have to place the geometry at a particular location so for that we can uh, use this we can right click and we can click the place option so we can uh, place at different uh, locations and we can we can do so many things we can move we can rotate we can we can delete or we can put some offsetting we can do the filling there are several uh, several uh, functionalities which we can use so after doing all those things what we need to do is we need to open this particular shutter and uh, after that there this is a mechanical shutter in uh, on the outlet of the laser so after clicking this open shutter the mechanical shutter will be opened now you can we can go into this laser control so laser control in the this right hand side and and uh, this pop up will be coming and then we can click manual marking so we are going to do the marking manually and and you can see that through the camera that uh, that the machining is happening so, uh, so after that we can take our sample we can uh, close this shutter and and we can take our sample so this sample has already been machined so this this is the micro channel which we have fabricated so this might be having a depth uh, less than 100 micrometer so if we want more depth so we may have to use the particular stage we have we may have to move the stage upward so after that machining our sample we have to stop the laser we have to switch off the final amplifier by clicking here so after we have to wait for some time after the final amplifier has been switched off we have to go and switch off the preamp preamp so now you can see that uh, we have switched off the final amplifier so now the screen is showing that it is ready to start so the preamp is already on the final amplifier we have switched off so now we can switch off the preamp so let's so by rotating this we can switch off the pre amplifier so now both the amplifiers are off the oscillator which is inside this laser will be will be on every time so we don't have to switch off the oscillator so that's all thank you